Hi and welcome to everyone. This is the Guest List Podcast with your host Steve Guest. A huge welcome to, to all our listeners today. Genuinely really excited to, to get chatting with our, our guest today. So one of the big reasons why I've started this podcast has derived very much from, from writing my book, creating that platform that's allowed me to share and create content and add value to, to every one of you hopefully along the way. Um, the reason for putting this podcast together is to get exciting, engaging and interesting guests that can help further that value, further the journey and add great content. I put out a post on social media a few weeks ago and said, who would you like me to talk to? Who within my network would you want me to be speaking to and that you'd like to listen to? Um, and today's guest is one of those individuals and I'm delighted to, to have him on the show today. Um, so a huge warm welcome to Joel Lalji. How are you? Great to be here, man. I I always wait for people to mispronounce my name. So and because we run through it, we always run through it, and then it yeah. gets to it, and people are like, "How do I say it again?" So great to be here, Steve. <laughs> uh, you know, it's 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 an honor to uh, to be able to share you know my story and and some of the value uh, that I feel like I can bring to the industry. And uh, so it's just awesome to be here with you. And I know you. Are doing great things within recruitment so thanks for having me on today okay so an absolute pleasure as i say i've i've followed you for for quite a while now on linkedin and, and i've enjoyed kind of sharing that journey and, and a lot of what we're going to talk about today so you're based in wisconsin in the us um yep. i have to say you're taking linkedin by storm because i see your posts everywhere and the the engagement and everything that's happening in them is just huge um and it's certainly a place that people need to be spending more time and understanding why you're on the mission that you're on. A um, few notes here. So you're sales lead for the North American market for Hoxo Media, which is inbound marketing for recruitment agencies. And you've, you're the host of Headhunter Hideout um, podcast um, live stream. Um, we've got here that you, you are out there on a mission teaching recruiters on how to use LinkedIn content to attract clients. Yeah. Now, yeah. that's probably a, a good, good place to start. Yeah. I mean, LinkedIn, for me, is my uh, safe haven. It's my go-to place. Why do you feel LinkedIn is, is, is the platform? Yeah, yeah, 100%. So, I, obviously, you know, I, in, at least in the U.S., like I was brought up on LinkedIn Recruiter as really my primary way to source people. Uh, we ca we kind of got away from messaging people because obviously there's so much spam on there. But as far as just being able to source people and then being able to connect with with them, it's just such a powerful tool. I don't know if there's another more powerful tool out there that allows you to not only get the data and be able to map out organizations, but obviously you can message people as well. Um, and so for many years, I lived on LinkedIn Recruiter and I was just connecting with people. I was messaging them. And then, you know, obviously just following a, a kind of a sales cadence to, to get people um, interested in the roles that I was working on. Uh, so, so I used it for both the sales side and for the recruitment side. Um, but, you know, over the last couple of years, what's developed on LinkedIn is it's just transitioned into more of a social platform. And I, I think it's kind of happened under the radar because obviously you have Instagram, TikTok, um, Twitter, th those are seen as the, the primary, you know, social platforms, obviously Facebook as well. Yeah. Uh, and you know, you've got the rise of influencers as well over the last five years. And, you know, when I think of like influencer, obviously I think Instagram, I think of people who have hundreds of thousands, millions of followers. Um, and you know, when it comes to LinkedIn, obviously LinkedIn is a completely different feel than Instagram. And mm -hmm. so because of that, um, there's been a rise of influencer on LinkedIn and there's been a rise of social content on that platform. Uh, but obviously, you know, if you're an Instagram influencer and you're posting pictures of yourself traveling and you've got a vlog and you're doing all these cool things, LinkedIn is probably not the best place for you to do that because it's B2B. And so kind of under the radar, um, you know, video was released. Um, you've got the news feed. It just really started to evolve and change. And, I, I just, I just realized, you know, I was seeing people posting content daily and I was looking at the content they were posting and I just thought, man, why am I not doing this? And, and what yeah. is, what's separating me from these people who are posting? Um, and so 
now, now that I'm using LinkedIn, you know, really primarily as a, as a place to put content and a place to uh, develop an audience, um, I've gone away from, I mean, I still use it outbound and still use sales navigator, but I've, I've really got into how can I use content to attract people as opposed mm-hmm. to how can I use, use LinkedIn as part of my inbound or sorry, outbound strategy. Uh, so yeah, I just, I just think for anyone who's B2B, I mean, obviously it's not just recruiters, anyone that's B2B, if you're not using LinkedIn, both as that method to connect with people, uh, to learn, to collaborate, and then to produce content, I, I think like you're, you're probably missing out on, you know, maybe 40 to 50% of the full power of, of that network. So yeah, for if, if you're B2B, I think LinkedIn's a, a no brainer. Yeah, it's huge, isn't it? And I think, I think even if we look at your transition, so you were a, initially a recruiter, so you would use it and it sounds like you used it as per the majority of recruiters out there. Yeah. It's one to send messages, send or connect and send a sales message to say, I need to speak to you because I need you to come and work here or I need to speak to you because I've got this great candidate. And that's part of the problem I would say at the moment is most recruiters work in that manner and don't post, they don't share content, they don't say, um, about, they don't talk about anything about their journey or promote their ethics, core values and things like that. And you've transitioned from being that recruiter to being almost the complete opposite. Yeah. 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 I, I, it's, it's interesting. Like when I was working in, in the agency world, um, <clears throat> I was a part of our blog team. So that was probably like the most writing that, that, that I would do. And I was always interested in just write writing in general. And so I got on our blog mm-hmm. team, but even when, when I was at, at the agency, I mean, the agency I was at, I was there for five years. We were a startup. We went from, you know, six people when, when I started and we, and by the time I left there, left there for, after five years, there was 89 people. And I think now they're almost at a hundred right. people. Um, some and growth. S- s- huge growth. And, um, their their kind of billing model was actually slightly different uh, than than most in in the uh, the industry. So it wasn't mm-hmm. it wasn't contingent and it wasn't retained. It was actually kind of like an hourly RPO model that that they used. Okay. And what that allowed me to do was it really allowed me to, to to truly partner with with the companies I was working with. And mm-hmm. you know we we would our mission was to save our corporate clients money and in saving them money. Uh, we'd win more of that business. So it was, a, it was a slightly different model. But even with that being said, they were, um, you know, quote unquote, disrupting the industry. Uh, but yeah. I noticed that when it came to content and when it came to marketing, there was just no vision of, of how to build a brand. And I think to me, that speaks a lot to just our industry where people who have been in the industry for, you know, let's say 10, 15, 20 years, uh, we, we've, yeah. You know, I'm I'm not at that point. I'm about seven years in in the, the industry, uh, but it, I've been in the industry long enough to understand that the mindset is short term. It's how do I hit my KPIs for the quarter? Hey, how do I hit my KPIs for the week? How do I do it in a yeah. day? And yeah, yeah. the whole ideology with brand building is brand building is years, and um, you know maybe decades. And and the people who grasp a hold of that. Yeah. then it gives them the energy to start building, building a brand. But in most agencies, because we're, we're running on the short term, short term, short term, there's zero training and incentive for people to focus on something like building a brand or building a personal brand or putting out content because that's mm-hmm. a long term strategy. And so I, I, I noticed that there was a, just a drastic need for, you know, even basic things like how to write, like there's, there's very little training on how to write within the recruiting industry. It's all how to speak and how to, how to be persuasive. Um, and obviously those skills aren't going to go away. Like you're going to have to talk to people on the phone. You're going to have to be a persuasive communicator. Uh, but as we shift kind of generationally, let's say in the workforce, there's more people coming into the workforce that aren't really wanting to be on the phone, but they'll interact on social. And, and I think yeah. a lot of agencies, they're, they're lagging on these trends, but it's because if you're an owner, you've always seen the quickest way to the money is the phone and it still is the quickest way to the money. Yeah. But eventually you just hit a tipping point where if you're of the mantra, well, we've always done business this way. 
you might as well just take a look at Blockbuster. You might as well take a look at some of these huge retail giants that just did yeah. things the same way. And to think like that is basically you're planning your own extension. So if you're, if you're retiring in five to 10 years, perfect. Who cares? Right. But if you're looking for your agency or your team to outlast you, then if you don't have a digital strategy very quickly, the, the companies that adopt it, they're going to take off. They're going to get more market share and have yeah. people coming to them. And the people that don't, it's just, it, it's going to be, it's going to go from 50 calls a day to hundred calls a day to 200 calls a day to 400 calls a day. And instead of having six month long recruiters that last in an agency in six months, they're going to last one day and be like, I'm not doing this because it's just not worth yeah. it. Um, it's so true, isn't it? I think I come from the traditional um, style recruiter. So I am the cold call, loads of activity. The harder you work, the more you get paid, the more you bill, the more successful you are. It's about your ability to hit your KPIs on a daily basis. And over time, I've grown to understand the power of social media, the power of personal and company branding. And I think if I think back in terms of the teams that I've grown and the consultants that I've hired, yeah. I've hired the traditional recruiters that are, no, no, everything's done on the phone. I'm comfortable with that. And, and I'm kind of half in that camp. And yeah. then you take on the younger recruiters now that you perhaps call the millennials, um, who are very much more in the social media camp and, and everything's about messaging, direct messaging, social media yeah. brand. And they never pick up the phone because they're frightened of being rejected at least with the message, they might not get an answer. And yeah. I think it's finding that balance where they both complement each other and you build it into a, an overall strategy yeah, where exactly. you come out with the best result. Yeah. Well, and, and I think that's a fear for most people, right? It's like when we start talking about digital and social, we, we start looking at it as, you know, cold calling versus social strategy. And that, that's not the, that's, if that's the message, which is, is sounding like I'm communicating, it's definitely not. It's just, you know, when, when I think of, you know, when I, when I think of, of an overall sales strategy, um, I think what's happening, and you see this a lot in the technology space in like SaaS or FinTech or some of these other uh, kind of more technology driven uh, industries, the salespeople in those industries have adopted, you know, something called demand generation where you're training your salespeople to also be marketers. And so what you have is you have individuals that know how to write they know how to create content to, to get eyeballs on, on themselves. Mm -hmm. So over time, people know you, they're aware of you, and either they're coming at you inbound or when you hit the phone, they have an awareness of who you are. And so to your point, um, it's, it's marrying the two together and figuring out a strategy that works for both as opposed to looking at it as, well, I'm just going to keep cold calling. I'm not going to touch this. Or, well, I'm just going to do yeah. this and I'm not going to cold call. It's like you have to – you have to have both and you have to have an outbound. Uh, but I think over time, if you're smart about it, um, you can, you can actually start to really get an inbound system that works. Yeah. And, and I think to, to me, it's like, yeah, you know, the first five years in recruiting, it's going to be a struggle no matter which way you look at it. Cause you're learning the industry, you're learning the players, you're learning the candidates, yeah. people are learning you. But if you can adopt a digital strategy early enough, and a good outbound strategy, then both are gonna to work together. And, and, and at that point, that's why I think you become extremely you know, powerful and you're able to leverage a lot more. And um, yeah. you know, that, that's the power of branding. So it's, like, it's kind of like a constant battle with marketing versus sales. Yeah. Um, but to your point, it's how do we bring it together and how do we make a more, uh, I guess, almost like a more highly skilled recruiter that, that understands different facets of human psychology as well. And, you know, I've, I've heard it, I've heard some of the interviews I've had, I've had with uh, agency owners that have made millions and millions and millions of dollars. They've put all their kids through college. I mean, they've had awesome careers. And a lot of times they're like, well, the CEO still answers the phone. I go, yeah, they do because they know you. But if you're just joining in in the recruitment world, you know, chances of a CEO picking up the phone to you and then hearing you out, it's pretty low. Um, yeah. But, it, but it, it takes time. So it's marrying both of them together. So yeah, I'm, I'm 100% with you there. Completely. And I think the conversations I have, so <clears throat> say I, I talk about this statistic quite often and um, I, I'd actually 
obviously it's developed over time, but LinkedIn, so 600, 706 million users on LinkedIn. Yeah. And I think the proportion is only 1% of the users actually post content onto the platform, which is such a minute area of LinkedIn. And, and I think the vast majority of LinkedIn are recruiters. Yeah. So that does beg the question, what are recruiters doing if they're not creating content or posting? And the answer to that is they're just messaging, direct messaging, and they blend into what every other recruiter does. Yeah. So content, publishing content, allows you the ability to stand out and differentiate. The problem with that is most people don't know what to post. Yeah. They don't know how to create content. They run out of ideas really quickly, and they put pressure on themselves to come up with something that they think is of value to their network or audience because they want huge engagement. They want the next viral post. Yeah. What would you say in terms of people that are stuck there, which will be the vast majority of people? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, with, with Hoxo, we have, we have an academy where we're running people through um, all of this, right? So we're looking at how do you optimize your LinkedIn profile? Then we're talking about, you know, copywriting and video. And then we start getting into like content buckets and, and actual strategy. Mm -hmm. And, and I think, for most people, when, when you're starting out, um, you've got to have a plan and you've got to understand <coughs> basically how to, how to schedule out content in advance. Um, and so, you know, I, we, we like to break things down in the, in the three categories where you've got the personal content, you've got the value content, and then you've got the credibility content. And so you, you're breaking things up. So you want to tell your own story. Like you said before, as recruiters, we all have a story. We all have a journey. And it's not just recruiters. Every human has a story. And, and that content is usually the content which will drive the most engagement because inherently, if you tell a story about overcoming or you tell a story about, you know, something in your personal life that taught you something in business, those posts are going to connect with more people. Um, now, the problem is, is most people do that and then they get a ton of engagement and they think, all right, I'll double down on this. I'll just start telling stories of myself. The problem with that is, is you don't want to just completely do that because then you're missing the focus of what is the actual value that I can bring. So when it comes to the value piece, you know, as a recruiter, I'm looking at it, what are my clients' pain points? What are perhaps my candidates' pain points? Uh, what are pain points within the industry that I can solve? Um, so perhaps, you know, maybe you're working with clients and you notice that they all are struggling with the same, the same problem. You can use content to be seen as a consultant and this is how we can solve this issue. So you can post content around that. Um, and then you have like the, you know, that credibility piece where you can post about some of the victories you've had. You can post about some of the job openings that you have. And I, and you know, obviously like when I look at recruiters, most of them will just either post uh, their company's awards or they'll post uh, like just random jobs that they're working on. And I, I think that's okay if you do it the right way. Uh, but when it comes to content, it's like you always want to have a story around whatever ever you post. So once you break down those three pillars, then what you can start to do is you can start to plan out your week and go, okay, what are the personal stories I want to tell this week? What are some of the high value topics I want to cover? And what are some of the credential pieces that I can, I can cover? Like maybe open jobs that I'm working on, uh, maybe mm -hmm. recent placements. Um, and so if you can allocate time at the beginning of the week to do that, and I don't mean map out exactly what the post is necessarily, but at least have, you know, the idea and a few points that you want to cover. Then when it comes to the day, you're not just left going, all right, what the heck am I going to post? Yeah. And, and so it's, it's, when I look at marketing and content in general, you have to have some sort of framework or strategy to work on when you just begin. And so for me, when I first started, I had the goal of one video a week. And then I wanted to post one, one time a day. And so that's what I do on a Sunday. I'd record my video and then I'd use that video as like a breakdown for my other posts. And I just stick on topic. And I, I did that for about three months and I stuck to it. So it was about 90 days. And then I started realizing like, Hey, I can actually just kind of spontaneously post. Like I got very good at just hopping on. I can do my post, uh, but it's a, it's a skill and it's like anything. And, you know, I would approach it just the same way. Like if you were to train a new recruiter, um, you say, okay, you got to block out your day. You've got to, you've got to have a framework. Okay. This is, I'm going to call, call clients. 
many cocoa client uh, or candidates, and you'd have your day scheduled out. It's the same ideology with with content as well. I think yeah. for most people, to your point, they get three days in, and they're like, "Well, what's left?" And yeah. and so to take that pressure off, plan. You know, it's like what, what's that old saying? It's like uh, uh, planning to fail is is uh, fa- or fail it failure to plan is planning, planning to, to fail. Plan, yeah. The yeah, exactly yeah. the same with content. Uh, the other thing I would do that I think would be helpful is, you know, follow people who are doing amazing stuff in your space. So, you know, follow myself, follow Steve, follow <laughs> like Sean, who I'm working with at Hoxo, like follow yeah. him, like follow people who are doing it and don't copy, you know, us, but start to get ideas for like the type of content yeah. that they're posting and then make it your own. So I think it's a combination between planning and then looking at what other people are doing and starting to, um, you know, kind of em- emulate them and just look at what they're doing yeah, and, and it's, uh, it's follow the map. It's important to know what works. And I think we all know algorithms on social media platforms are consistently changing and it's there to keep us on our toes. Yeah. And I always say you want to have a mix of ideas. So there might be text posts, there might be text with an image or a GIF or a meme. You might be putting posts out where they're videos. Sometimes they will deliver far and wide. Sometimes they won't. You can't put too much expectation on any one particular post. It's 100%. about the consistency of keep showing up. Well, I, you bring up an interesting point too, and it's, it's, it's experimenting, right? So last year in 2020, I posted a thousand times on LinkedIn. So that broke down to three times a day. And to your point, I really mixed it up. So you know, you got your basic text posts. Now, even with the text posts, there's three types of text posts. You can post really short quote, you can post like a medium sized block, or you could post like an extended post where you're kind of got your introduction, your hook line, then you've got the body, and then you've got a call to action uh, with a quote, obviously it's just a quote. But then, then you start looking at images and again, the images are tied in with the copy. So there's multiple things you can do. Then you start looking at GIFs, then you start looking at polls, videos, live stream, yeah. articles. So to your point, like the reason I posted a thousand times was because I wanted to learn what works with my audience and what doesn't. Yeah. And there's, a, there's an analytics tool out there called Shield, which I highly recommend downloading as well and signing up for. Um, Because with that data, because I posted a thousand times, I was able to break down what types of post works, what types of posts don't, what time I need to post. And it's like anything, you have to experiment. And it's the same with cold calling. Mm -hmm. Like your script isn't the same script you started off with day one. You, You tailor it and you see what works for you, what doesn't work, and you make it your own. It's the exact Mm -hmm. same thing with, with content. And so one of the most underrated skills just in general with content is that power to experiment and to try different things. And as you post, you might see, Oh, Hey, that post got 5,000 likes or 500 likes, you know, that, that'd be kind of a viral post. Um, great. You know, awesome. Let's, let's break that post down and see what the elements are. And Mm -hmm. to me, if you can reverse engineer why something is doing well, and then also, if you have a post that doesn't do well, I look at that as a victory because I'm able to look at that and go, well, why didn't it do well? And you start reverse engineering the success of your posts, then, then it becomes powerful. So for example, mm-hmm. I post business development posts. Those ones I know are going to get the least engagement out of anything I post. And I post blatant business development uh, mm-hmm. posts. So I say, hey, if you need help with content, reach out to me. That's pretty blatant. And those yeah. posts, they do the least uh, well out of all my posts, but they produce the most DMS. They produce the most inbound leads. Then I have my kind of like inspirational, what you could call maybe fluffy posts. Some would say that, but they're inspirational. So they connect with people. Those posts will go viral often because I figured out how do I keep the audience wide? How do I connect with as most people? And so if you can start to reverse engineer how successful a post is going to be, then you can start to understand what's going to do well, why it does well, why something won't do well. Um, And you can really start to develop a strong strategy. And unfortunately, again, like we said before, most people get three days in and nothing happens and they they give up. Mm. I recommend to people three to six months is, is where you start to be able to get a good enough data set 
to understand your audience and understand what works. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, it's like anything like going to the gym, you know, it's like three to six months is a long time yeah. for, for, for us nowadays because we just expect quick results. And unfortunately, you just don't get that with this. I was going to say that that leads on nicely because in my experience, recruiters, and we've discussed this already, because we're so heavily KPI'd and the expectation is we need to make placements, we need to hit our KPIs, we need results, results, and we need them now. When recruiters come to the point of social media marketing, and you'll notice with most recruiters, most recruiters, if they post anything as, a, as, a, as some content, it will be, I'm looking for a quantity surveyor in Birmingham to start on Monday for this brilliant client. Uh, let me know if this is in, of interest. It's that sort of content. And the best will in the world, candidates aren't going to like and comment because they don't want their employers knowing that they're looking. And employers aren't going to comment because they don't want every recruiter contacting them saying, I need a QS as well. Yeah. And therefore, they get very little engagement. The engagement yeah. happens off the platform or in the parts where nobody sees. So recruiters outwardly put that sort of post out, get no interaction and no engagement, and then think it's failed and therefore stop. And they don't necessarily see the big picture of how do I get the engagement to get people interested for people to understand what I work and recruit for. And yeah. that's where the fun is. And I think there's a whole, there's a huge education piece in understanding how to create the strategy that then complements. hundred percent. And, and, you know, it's, it's funny. Like I, I started posting a lot more stories, for example, and like stories would be the perfect place to do that. So, um, you know, you're a recruiter, let's say, you know, let's say you're recruiting process engineers, right. And you're like, Hey guys, I've got a, I, you know, you do a story super informal it's supposed to be behind the scenes there's zero editing required like literally you just click on the story um and you you know you say hey i'm hiring a process engineer in birmingham and you know for this manufacturing client um you know if you know anyone um reach out to me okay so you post that through the stories now with stories you can see who's viewed it um and it gives people an opportunity to dm you so if you were going to do like a post like that why not why not use the stories you can track it um now, I think with, with the newsfeed, like you could still post that same post. It's just how you frame it. And I think it's how you build it into a story. So, for example, um, you know, you could say, man, 2020 was a rough year. I've heard about a lot of people out of jobs. I want to give back to the community here. Uh, I've got this awesome job. Uh, you know, feel free to DM me. Like you're putting more of a story around it where I think most people are like working on this job. PM me if you're interested. Yeah. And And so... When you, build, when you learn how to build that community, one of the things I've noticed is if you can build a community and audience with some of your other content that's less like that, those people will actually carry through and they'll, they'll kind of like and, and comment on those posts as well, which will boost the engagement. And so um, I think one of the first things I say to people is build a community first, like build a community that trusts yeah. you. They don't have to be even in your industry necessarily it's it really you want to find people who are also active on LinkedIn and start building communities with them. And then what you find is when you do do a post like that, or you post something that's more um, in line with your business, let's say you're kind of, you get like a follow through from engagement. Uh, but, it, but again, it's, I, I you know, I, I have that vision where, you know, as a recruitment agency, you know, I, I, I think you've got to, you've got to give your people time to do this as well and, and not look at it as a waste of time. And one of the things that we say is like, just, you know, look, look around your office or, you know, obviously everyone's working from home right now, but start asking your employees, like, how long are you actually spending on LinkedIn, just scrolling through? And the goal is if you've got people who are just scrolling through the newsfeed, it's converting that time into something productive. And when you can do that, even if it's just with engagement, like engagement's another way, like commenting on other people's posts. Mm -hmm. It's like, there's no training in that. There's no training in your prospects are probably posting things and getting zero engagement. If you show up and you're regularly supporting them, that goes a long way. And obviously you might not yeah. get on a call and they might not go, Hey, thanks for commenting on my post three times in the last month, but yeah. giving the people on social media, does not backfire because we're all running on the same notion of we post and we want to get likes and we want to get comments. Yeah. And so the more that you can give on social media as well as post, 
you've got to work that in your business development strategy. And, you know, for me, it, it's, it's the more your name is out there, the more people are going to be aware of who you are. And that's, that's kind of the goal, right? It's the goal. It's like, I want people yeah. to know who I am. Um, so when I reach out to them, you know, that one of the most common things I hear is, man, yeah, I've seen your videos or I've seen your content. And these are from people who never have commented before or never, never interacted. And I think we just, we, we underrate like the power of these things because a lot of times to your point, it's like people don't want to engage. They don't want to like, so the yeah. only way to get that engagement is to find other people who are engaging, collaborate with them and be consistent with it. And, uh, but I, th I think there's ways, there's ways to incentivize it. And the advice I would give any agency owner is, you know, cause this comes up a lot. Like how do we keep our people accountable to, to me? You've got to lead by example. If you're the agency mm -hmm. owner, you've got to lead by example and you've got to take it seriously. And mm -hmm. you've got to show your people that, Hey, yeah, it's probably going to take some time, but if we work this into our schedule and we start maybe putting more goals around, like connecting with people and posting content and kind of work as a base, Mm -hmm. you know, kind of work as a team, you know, what you'll start to see is like, you'll start to see those inbound leads coming in. And as soon as that starts to happen, as soon as you get old candidates that you placed 10 years ago, calling you old clients, as soon as you start feeling that effect, that's when your people will buy into the system. Um, but you've, I think as a leader in your company, if you want to innovate, you've got to take that first step. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, I, I know in my experience, like even just working for people that train cold calling, there's nothing worse than like a manager that's telling you to do calls and they're not making calls themselves, which is why it's like, I feel like the best leaders in recruit in recruitment are the ones that still run a desk because they're in it and they get it and they're yeah, able to say, 100%. Hey, I'm with you in this. And I think it's <laughs> the same with, with content. Um, and the other piece is I think one of the things that will happen over time is um, for example, I spoke to Joe Mullings, who's in the U S he's, he's got, you know, starting up a, a, an office in the UK as well. And he's mm -hmm. in med tech and he's been producing content for five years and really bought into it at his mm -hmm. office. They got rid of all the cold calling KPIs and now they have more KPIs around LinkedIn. Uh, but it's okay. still with that understanding of like, he wants people to feel comfortable. So if they're not ready to do video, um, you know, he doesn't force them to do it. If they're not ready to write, he doesn't force them. But what he finds is as he hires people on, they see the top performers in the office have the biggest brands and they want to get there too. And, and I'm not saying like a hey, overnight, get rid of your KPIs for cold calls, but we need to start just integrating and marrying the two together and figuring out ways to reward people. Uh, Cause ultimately, again, like we've talked about before, it's like the, the digital, it's just growing exponentially. And, and now is really the time with LinkedIn. There's so much, there's so much opportunity out there with organic reach and yeah, all, all this think, good stuff. I think the, the pandemic the last year, certainly in the UK, we've spent the majority of the last 12 months in lockdown. And the majority of businesses, including recruiters, are sat at home and they're working remotely. They're working from home um, and the ability to get in front of clients by way of phone calls or emails or direct messages has become that little bit more difficult because you can't ring through a switchboard. You can't get through reception or a PA to speak to somebody. You need to know their mobile um, or you need to write engaging content on a message or an email to get a response so for me the biggest thing people can be doing to kind of almost complement those elements is to build that social media presence and that brand because so many of us are spending more time on social media than we ever have 100 um, and i think for recruiters at this point in time especially to be able to reach that extra level of performance that higher level of ability being able to write great content engaging posts um, promoting that personal brand is now more powerful than it ever has been um, yeah. and and people should be investing a lot more time in spending whether that's self-development or education um, what I mean in terms of so let's say we've got the content, we've got the ideas, we've got a plan in place. 
how do you get better at writing? How do you develop your techniques to? I, man, I think it's like what we just said before, where it's like, you get better by doing it. And there's just no way, way around that. And you get better and you know your audience by just doing it more and more and more. And it's the same with like video and live streams. So when I get, like the first guy that I interviewed was Lou Adler, who's, you know, a huge voice in recruiting in the US. He's, you mm-hmm. know, an official LinkedIn influencer. He's got a million followers. That was my first live stream that I did on LinkedIn. And if you go mm-hmm. back to that video, cause it's on my profile, I was kind of awkward. I didn't really know. I had no questions up. I remember I started getting like super kind of hot and I was like, oh man, like where is this conversation going? And he was a big personality, you know, and he kind of backed me into a corner and started selling his program. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is not where I want the conversation to go. But a year later, now it's like, you know, I've interviewed people like Greg Savage, Burt Miller, who's uh, the CEO of one of the largest franchises in the US. And now as I interview uh, bigger names, I've gotten more comfortable. I've gotten better on camera. I've gotten better at asking questions and listening and developing questions off what they say. Um, and, and now there's a new app out there called Clubhouse. So I'm on Clubhouse a lot. Yeah. And what I realized is I'm good at Clubhouse because I practice the skills of interviewing and understanding to have conversations on camera. And I've also done a lot of podcasts. So I think it's the same with writing. It's like you just have to keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it. And you get better. Uh, Mm. And the other thing is too, is like, again, like consume content, like consume the consume content from people who are doing well. And this would be the same. This isn't just on LinkedIn. This is on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. Mm -hmm. Look at the posts that go viral and figure out why it's going viral and then get better at doing that. That's how you get good at social media. It's like consuming it. That's how you get good at podcasting. You look at podcasters and you look at the interviewers and you go, what are they doing that's so engaging? And then you start to do it. And it's a learning curve for everybody. And I'll say, I'll say this, you know, one of the biggest advantages of being a content producer is you get so much more confidence. You get an authority because you, because for most people, what holds them back is fear of what other people are going to think, fear of what other people in the agency are going to think, fear of what their clients are. Yeah. But the reality is, is once you break past that fear, you kind of enter like a stratosphere of like where you're bold, your confidence, and you feel like you know, you feel like you have an edge over your competition is basically what it comes down to. So yeah, if you've got, 100%. if you, you get a post that got 5,000 views in the morning, you're going to be a better cold caller when you're calling people because you've got that confidence and you're like, man, I've got this yeah. brand that I'm building. And, and, and again, I think it's, it's, you've got to be consistent with it, build up and get yeah. to that point, practice, practice, practice. Um, you know, and then I think self-development, you know, like we're running this Academy, you know, maybe it's not the Academy. Maybe it's another like copywriting course, but you've got, you, it, you can invest and you can learn like how the LinkedIn algorithm works, how this works, how that works, make that investment and then practice, practice, practice. I I'll tell you that when I first started posting content, it took me, I posted about this yesterday. It took me three months for my, for my content to hit a million views. Uh, It took me three, it's three months of posting and cumulatively I hit a million views. Um, And then once I hit a million views every month in 2020, you know, I was, it was like a million, a million and a half. And now it's averaging between a million and a half and 2 million. Uh, but when I look at some of those early posts, they sucked. They were just so bad. And I look back at it and I'm like, I kind of cringe because I'm like, I can't believe I yeah. posted that. But I learned, you know, and nobody supported me. I mean, like my, my own agency that I worked at, they like, no, like, for the first couple of weeks, people showed up and they liked it and then they stopped and people were like, yeah. they just got used to me showing up on LinkedIn, but I learned and I got better. And so if you want to be a better copywriter, write more. If you want to be a better on video, do more video. If you want to be a better live streamer, do more live streams. Unfortunately, yeah, I just think about like playing, playing, you know, soccer or football. It's like you could read and watch as many games as you want. You can watch Messi dribble around 50 people. Yeah. Who cares, man? You're not going to get better unless you get out there on the field and do it. And there's just no shortcut around that. That's it, isn't it? It's about taking action. And I think 
they say the majority of people stop after that first cold call. The majority of people stop after the post doesn't go viral or they don't get the engagement they thought they deserved because the post had so much value. Yeah. And I think many times we, we stop before actually we get any good at it. And it's so, it's so true with social media and, and creating that personal brand. Um, okay. So in terms of where, where we're at and I've, I've started to see this over certainly the last probably two or three years as my LinkedIn posts and content have, have improved, but the power of having inbound leads over outbound. Yeah. What would you say about that? I mean, it has huge power, but you don't get to know about it until you're creating the content. Like I, so it took me about nine. Okay. So granted, like, when I started producing content, like I said, there was that whole journey. Uh, I'm still, I was still relatively new in, in my recruitment journey as well. So, you know, if you're somebody who's got 10 years experience, 15 years experience, you're going to get inbound leads quicker. Now the inbound leads probably aren't going to be from new prospects, but you know, if you've been working in recruiting for 10 years, my guess is you've put, hopefully you've placed, you know, up to a hundred people, maybe more than that. Right. And so you have a lot of candidates you've placed, you probably have past clients that maybe you worked with three, four years ago that you haven't engaged with. So um, there's a couple of options you have. You can just blast everybody with an email and say, Hey, just want to check in with you on your 2021 goals, blah, blah, blah. You could do that. Everybody's doing that, right? That's, that's yeah. trying to re-engage with them. Um, so I think if you start posting and you've got a great track record as a recruiter in the real world, you'll start to get inbound leads quicker. But as you start to get new prospects in, which I think you've got to be realistic with the time period and I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It could be, you know, six to nine months before you start getting like new prospects. So brand new people have never heard of you because it takes time for people to build trust. Mm -hmm. um, one post is not going to build trust. You know, let's just one viral post isn't going to build trust with anyone. There's kitten posts yeah. that go viral and I don't trust cats anymore. So you've got to do it over time and you've got to be connecting yeah. with people. Right. So let's say, you know, six months in, you get a warm inbound lead, which is that that's how long it took me to get an actual job order, like literally a client reaching out to me or a prospect reaching out and saying, um, yeah, it was between six and nine months. They reached out to me and said, Hey, I've seen your content. Uh, I want to work with you. Send me contract. Perfect. Send her the contract. She signed it. I said, let's set an inbound call, you know, a, a job order uh, call so I can yeah. take in the, the job. Um, that was the best, that was the best intake call I've ever had because yeah. she trusted me. She wanted to work with me. She gave me a full hour. Now, yeah. I don't know about anyone else out there, but trying to get an hour from, from an owner of a company or a hiring manager, it's a big ask. But when they come to you, there's a reason for that. It's because you've already built up that trust. So then in the second phase, you start submitting candidates over. Again, it's like you can have an intake meeting. You could find some great candidates. Who cares? The, the goal, goal then is getting interviews and it's getting those candidates submitted over for interview. And the only way that happens is if that hiring manager or whoever is running that process trusts you. So you could have 10 of the best kit candidates. If they don't trust you, you know, they might be slow in getting back to you. When they come as an inbound lead, things just speed up. So you have the ability, if you can execute quickly and you've got a good candidate pool and you're a good recruiter then then everything speeds up so mm -hmm. the power of inbound is you build trust right away you have a better relationship from the get-go and now you're an expert and i think for most recruiters you know you get to that point naturally but it takes a while i mean it could take five to ten yeah. years before you're like the expert consultant in your field but once you get to that point then it's a case of oh steve's sending me someone they, they don't go through the the emails back and forth like what about this what about that they're like i trust this guy's judgment yeah, and so yeah. what what inbound does is it just it makes that more rapid the caveat with all this is like i don't care how good your online brand is if you suck at recruiting it doesn't matter yeah. so you, you yeah I, I think that's the point of it right it's like i i see a huge opportunity with people who have executed for years and years and years yeah they had they, they start putting out content everything is accelerated and, uh, and so, yeah, I mean, inbound's way different. And the same is for me now, like when I'm, I'm doing outbound, cause I'm reaching out to agency owners in the U S we're trying to launch yeah. the Academy in the U S. So 
that's some trust that needs to be built up. But I get five to seven lead inbound leads a week. And those calls are obviously way easier uh, because yeah. people are like, Hey, I've seen your content for the last three months. You know, I don't have to say, do you know the power of content? Because they're coming yeah. to me. And so yeah, it's, yeah. it's um, yeah. And, and I think that's where like that, that once you get to that point, you see the value It's just getting to that point. And it's, it's like looking at someone who's ripped and they've been going to the gym for five years. You're like, you know, like, how good does it feel? You're like, yeah, it feels amazing, but you can only experience that until you've got it. And I think it's that journey. That's yeah. what you have to cross through. And there's just no shortcuts with that. Um, I think that's it. And I've always said to any new recruiters or any recruiters that move businesses to set up their, their new desk or the new business, it takes six to nine months to build a successful recruitment desk where people get to know who you are and what you're about and, and whether you're any good or not. And that can come straight from the fact that if you were just purely cold calling, which is how I started out, it was still six to nine months to build a desk. It's six yeah. to nine months now to build a desk if all you did was activity and calls. But actually the ability to back that up with a strategic way of working from a social media and a personal branding perspective, yes, it will accelerate it, but it can still take the six to nine months. If it takes yeah, seven but- touch points to build a working relationship, and build that trust whether it's social media or, or conversation yeah you've still got to have that thought process exactly and i think that's where to me it's marrying the both together again and and being consistent in whatever you do and it's you know i, I think the, the cold calling is just so interesting to me because it's like you it's to me that's like you can get lucky one day and not the other day and you can hit 100 voicemails I actually think you have yeah. a lot more control over a social media strategy and you can, you yeah. can track it. And that's where I think it's just doing both in, you know, in, in kind of concurrence and understanding that, that yeah. power, I think, especially right now it's a hot trend, right? Everybody's wanting to start up their own agency. You've got the power with technology. Let's face it. You don't need a big corporate brand anymore. I mean, you can build a mm-hmm. personal brand. We have the technology to do it. You can automate a lot of things. There's a lot, we have a lot more technology, technological power than we ever did before. Uh, but yeah. regardless, if you start, if you start something yourself, you're going to have to either cold call for six, six to nine months, or you're going to do content for six to nine months, but really the, the best strategy is to do both and, yeah. and build a brand from, from the get go. I think, you know, in, in talking to a lot of clients that I'm, I'm working with, it's like they, they built, you know, that word of mouth and their referrals and that's great. And like, you want that. And obviously that's not going away. But it's 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 like you're just missing this whole section of inbound inbound leads, and it's because they didn't do it from the start. Or ten years ago, when yeah. websites were all the rage, they never even set up a website. And yeah. you know, it's like all of these things they don't work independently. And it's not a battle for SEO versus website versus content versus cold call. It's mm-hmm. like let's work out a system that is like let's work out a machine here that that works. So. Yeah. Yeah, man, I love it. I, 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 as you can see, like I, I love this stuff, and I, and I mean it because I'm not, I'm not somebody who like, you know, I, I made the transition from recruiter to marketer because I'm a practitioner, and I fell in yeah. love with writing and building up audiences, and you know, I, it's not just LinkedIn. Did the same thing on TikTok. Now I'm doing that on Clubhouse, and I just love, I love the idea of like figuring things out. Um, yeah. And I, I love the idea of marketing and psychology. And I think as recruiters, it's like, we're really good with understanding the psychology of sales. And I think a lot of us could be really great at marketing. It's just, yeah, there's nobody to just make that path for us. You know, it's no channeling one, it, isn't it? Yeah. It's it having, is. having the right people around you to be able exactly. to help you get to where you need to get to. Joel, that has been amazing. I've loved every minute of that. Yeah, I love it, man. These times always go quick. That's what I've noticed. Yeah, if um, obviously our listeners are keen to to come and find you, obviously we've mentioned a few platforms there. Where's the best place for them to to come and connect? I look. I would say right now LinkedIn. Man, if you if you just you just got to send me a personal message that says like, hey, listen to the podcast. Um, you know, let's let's connect. I I. I'm maxed out on connections and I got like 6,000 in the inbox that I have to weed through. But if you put on there, Hey, I'm, I heard you on the podcast. If you're a recruitment professional, I'm going to make room for you in, in the network. Yeah. Um, 
for quicker communication, honestly, like Instagram and, and Twitter are pretty easy to reach me because I just don't have yeah. as many followers. Um, and then I'd say, you know, if you're on Clubhouse, look me up, Joel Algy, the tag is LinkedIn legend. I'm on there like every day, just giving free advice. So that's a great place. Like if you've got questions on LinkedIn, content basics, yeah. find me on there as well. Um, that, that'd be the best way. I think in terms of, um, you know, how I operate, like one of the questions I get a lot is like, can I have free advice? I did free, I did, I do free advice every day with my content and I do it on clubhouse. Uh, but I think for most of us, we don't need more free advice. We need accountability and we need an action plan strategy and you need to stick to it. Uh, hundred <laughs> percent. There's a, there's a lot of free advice out there and it's like, Hey, Look at me. I, I see free advice about going to the gym <laughs> yeah. and I'm not, I'm not taking advantage of that. So. <laughs> it's been an absolute pleasure. If you're going to leave our listeners with one, one thing to go and do or one piece of advice that you feel will, will push them forwards, what would that be? Yeah, I might, you know, my advice is, is the same for anybody. If you're wanting to start in a content journey, start engaging with other people first. It's the easiest way to get used to writing get used to showing up. So I would just say, follow us on LinkedIn and just start engaging with our content um, and yep. just move, move forward, do something, take action um, and, and just start. I mean, that's, that's the best advice that I have for anyone. Uh, that's it. Simple. That's great start. advice. Joel, <laughs> thank you so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. I love, I love it. And I'm, I'm honored to be a, a guest and i do have your book look as well. at that even so, a bit of promotion at the end Thank that's you. right <laughs> gotta do that oh, i love it i love it man thanks a lot steve appreciate, appreciate it. it thank you